And I believe we are live! Good day, good day, my fellow friends. My name is Raven Marine, aka Thunburn One, and welcome to the Thuncast! Today it is episode 4 of season 2, and my god, it, we have made it this far. And I have to say, we're actually getting popular by every single day. People want to be part of our podcast, and even new and old members want to give their fair share of hellos and good days. Now, on to, well, why we're all here. But first, I want to give our fair share of compliments to a friend of ours who couldn't have been able to make it today. Koto. Koto was a man who honestly fulfilled his duties within the Imperium quite well. And though that life had to catch up to him, he needed to go. Honestly, I would tell him to go fly to the, fly to the highest point of the universe and achieve the stars. In this case, live your life, my fellow friend. If, there, if you have to make sacrifices, then do so. We'll be here waiting for you. If you end up watching this video, or if any of you guys have him friended, give him this fair share of thanks and a farewell, and hopefully we see you someday. Now today we have a first guest. He is a Kassakin within the Imperium of Man. I give you the man, the myth himself, Gun, aka Seko. Seko, how are you doing today, my fellow friend? Oh, I'm doing great, Thumber. I'm doing great. I'm no longer a Kassakin. I'm an aspirant now. Oh um, my! That's oh. You. Oh my, congratulations! I do apologize. <laughs> I remembered when you got promoted and I really, really, really forgot. I really forgot. Especially when if I'm if I'm correct, the two of you became the two of you Well, actually yes, we're gonna we're gonna get to that later. Um second person that's within the podcast who's been fulfilled for Koto. He is a cha he is chaos, and he's working up to become a chaos space marine. But for now, he's only a mere aspirant. I give you the man, the myth himself, Halo. Halo, how are you doing, my fellow friend? I am doing positively spectacular, Thunburn. <laughs> and I see that you got that voice changer on. The indication that you'll soon be wearing the full meta armor of a demigod. In this case, a chaos demigod. <laughs> it's true, Thunburn. This is basically my chaos swag right here. This is my favorite song. You like that? Uh, uh, that is going. <laughs> that would end up going bad. Uh, <laughs> yes, the audio really just end up as bad as it may, and hopefully that didn't get copyrighted by anyone. That's anything. chaos. That's chaos. That's how it is, you know? Indeed. It's brutal. It's, it's unfiltered. It's raw. Indeed. Just like me. And for the third person who's part of the podcast, he's actually an, uh, also, if I'm believe if I'm believably correct, a Space Marine aspirant. Yes, I, if I'm, if I'm correct... And I might, yep. you might have to correct, oh yes, you might have to correct me on this, but you did. Give you, the man, the myth himself, Trunk! Trunk, how are you doing today, my fellow friend? I'm doing fantastic, Thunberg, how are you? Uh, I'm doing quite well, and quite well to see all of you here. For today, good it is, here, that's good. And today, it is episode four, and we are continuing the podcast, High, and Mighty, and Strong. So, if I'm correct, the two of you had got Koto and Trunk, the two of you had gotten promoted to Space Marine, if I'm correct, aka Aspirant. Uh, yep, uh, correct. Yep, we're yep. Aspirants. Mm -hmm. Me and uh, Saisoku just, uh, I think a week and one day ago. Ah, uh, yes. Or eighth day as Aspirant. You know, when work mostly goes by for me, I intend to just focus on that so I can be able to get home. So when that, so when I probably just been doing going or just going through all that, I really forgot to give you my fair share of congratulations within the DMs. Honestly, I kind of 
almost do as everyone if I can remember. But I wanted to say this. Congratulations for you, Koto, and for you, Trunk, for becoming Space Marines. And I would glad to see you all to be great successors of your chapters. Thank, Thank you very much, Summer. Alright, for this fine podcast day, would you guys like to talk about anything? Or do I have to give the fair share of questioning? Um, I don't have anything that comes to mind. You guys, Sai, hello? If I may, I'd like to start off with uh, our aspirancy. I think we could talk about, you know, a little bit about that. Ah, yes. Yes. The trials and tribulations a young aspirant faces. In the face of failure, one must triumph. One must claim what is rightfully his, that ceramite armor. A true prize to behold. Trunk, how about you, sir? Well, I, uh, I'm enjoying my aspirancy. It's definitely challenging, as it should be. Um, look, I'm doing okay. Uh, we're just going through it. We actually, uh, me, Sai, Four Eye, the other aspirant, and then all the, uh, Chaos aspirants did a, uh, joint training together today. Which went pretty well. Very fascinating. What about you? What about you, Gun? Oh, sorry, Seko. Um, aspirancy has been going great. I love aspirancy so far. Uh, everyone, including the trainers and and everyone in uh, IF, has been has been wonderful to us and providing um, you know the proper essentials to uh, being able to succeed aspirancy and really putting us through the paces in order to uh, to to reach that that level they want us to be at. So. Uh, overall, a good time. That is good. That is good. I remember my time when I was when I was being well. Actually, when I was once an aspirant. By God, it was hard, especially those old days. Before we didn't get those fancy bolters or the or any of those good decentable weapons that could have been able to give us that good time of war, good uh, good good efforts in the battle and so on. We did not have those. Instead, we only had the average guardsman loadout, aka the one and only weapon that was good as an aspirant was the Cantrail Laz gun, and that was hard. But we were able to go through it and face it head on, because even though that we were given weak guns, it was a tribute. A tribute that we all must face in order for us to be gifted the second Yes, the second armor before Beyond Space Marine, which is Neo, which is Neophyte. But my time, <laughs> it was hard, and I tell you, it was hard, especially when it, when, especially when it was me being downgraded into a guardsman, which was no big of a deal. Besides, I was once a Bolgren, and that was actually really glorious on its own. Either way, I performed my task very well. That was for Dark Angels, right? Yes, Dark Angels. Hmm. I would have been able to. I would have been able to go into the Imperial Fist, but due to, well, me trying to get Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, the Emperor deemed me no longer fit to be part of a space to be part of the Space Marines anymore, which I've finally moved on with, and now have a new goal of becoming a Commissar. Which is taking my time, and I really wish I had more time. But it is a trial that I must face with life and gaming. So, with you guys be so with you guys, well, going through that, and before you were actually selected to become Space Marine, Gun, you came to me and you wanted to do all three Kazakhans. Why did you select? Why did you actually select the three of you, being you, K- Trunk, and Koto? Well, it's pretty simple, Thumber. Uh, at the time, Active Ranch was was uh, really putting in the work, and me and Trunk were uh, also pretty active Kazakhans, and we, you know, on Caldega grinding, uh, making sure we had that proper grind set and that proper um, kind of work ethic together as Kazakhans in, in one cohesive unit, right? So uh, I thought, you know, since we, we work the best, 
we're all pitching and catching uh that you know it would be us three that would be on have the honor of being on the fun cast so mm. okay and giving those fair share of words and just giving and being on the podcast will just give you that experience well actually no wait give the many new people who want to become casicans that new experience very smart and very absolutely wild. Very smart and very wise. Honestly, I really wish that Koto would honestly give his fair share. Wait, was Koto also active with you guys? At the time, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Mm. We miss you, yeah, Koto. Koto was uh, a yeah, few few times a week. It was, it was good, fun. Such a dedicated man was once part of our ranks, and still is within our hearts. So, Halo, with you being in the space, with you being in the space, well, some big part of the space brains, and for you to be actually an aspirant, how did you came this far? Well, Thunburn, it wasn't easy. I had to put the time in and the work. Trust me, you don't want to know the gory details of uh, where I got where I am now. Okay? Basically, uh, well, before I touch on that, um, in the aspirancy, you must understand that there is a great divide between the forces of man and chaos. Uh, if I may, let me, let me get a little mood music here. Hold on, there's an ad. My bad. <laughs> so, so basically, if you want to be a chaos aspirant, if you want to make it through selection, if you want to make that ceramite armor, you're going to have to do what you need to to survive. This may or may not include massive amounts of caffeine and amphetamines to get that extra edge <laughs> on that IF combat soldier. For if you don't best that soldier in battle, surely you will be put to death. So saith Vidium, for he is our chosen. Wow. Very dedicated. I just only no, wish I just only wish that that wasn't rain audio that you were playing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. it's good. It's good. Because am Don't I... worry. It'll, it'll be okay. Uh, okay, okay. At least you got your point out. And your audio and the audio for you talking was absolutely clear. That's pure dedication, especially from chaos. So there's a big there's a big difference in the trials when it comes to chaos and IF. IF you have a trial, and if you do well, you perform well. Uh, they look down on you and they say. Well, you know, he's acceptable. Even though you may fail, you may perform well. In Chaos, it's a completely different story. Grandmaster Vidium does not tolerate failure in the slightest. The moment you fail, your head falls from your shoulders, and you are brought before ruination. So essentially, uh, every aspirant that, that I know who is in Chaos now I believe it's Ender Space and Zuhu, uh, my fellow brothers in Chaos, who fight for the four horrible gods. We, uh, we're basically on like 300 milligrams of caffeine every time we're out there on Caldea. We power up, we pre-power up. Uh, you know, some of them have scripts for Adderall, dude, but we're out there and we're ready on Caldea. When you peek a when you peek a corner when you jump peek a corner and we flick to your head and we shoot you, that's all that baby. It's all the training, and we don't tolerate defeat or failure. That's what it means to be a chaos aspirant and a chaos marine. Fascinating. Coming from you, Halo, you've truly learned a lot from your time of becoming an aspirant. You've been waiting for this moment. For you to be this and giving your fair share of opinion for the many newcomers who would either be able to join Chaos or the Imperium is something that is truly worthy of And I'm glad that you are here, Halo. Um, Trunk! Thank you, Thunberg. For you, my, yeah. fellow, for you, my fellow friend, I actually have a question. 
what is it? Trunk. What does that name mean? <laughs> this is just Trunk. random. <laughs> this is just random to me. But I'm actually. But now, if you kind of say it from out of my head now and putting it into perspective, I'm kind of curious. What does your name actually mean? Is that like a play on words from that one song, Top Thumping? Or is it from that one character uh, from Dragon Ball Z? Well, I, I haven't heard that song, and I've, I've never watched Dragon Ball. But uh, Trunk Thumping, where I, where I got it from, I, uh, when my old friends were both into cars, and uh, Trunk Thumping is when you have like a crazy like bass system, a bunch of subwoofers in the back, of a, like at the trunk of a car. And uh, when they go off, it, like, it rattles the entire car, and that's, uh, that's the Trunk Thumping. So basically, only... I uh, oh. yeah, I have I have something else to add though. Going back to the, uh, the aspirancy halo, that uh, that sounds that sounds intense and all, but I think our uh, our 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 beautiful our chaplain Svi has uh, he might have he, he sends us he sends us uh, like like top of the line Scandinavian crack to uh, every every <laughs> patrol. He has us he has inhaled, us on our inhaled, consistently. Yep. In, inhale. Oh yeah, here, I, uh, I found the, I found the song, Trunk. Hold on, there's an ad. Oh, my bad. Yeah, you know this song though? It's like tub thumping? Do you remember this? I don't. Oh, it's oh, I, okay. Oh, okay, now I remember that song. Now it's I remember. tub thumping. That's where, that's where I thought it was from. Now I remember yeah. that song, actually. Now, if you can't think about it, I didn't listen to the whole song. The only reason why I know is because I watched Family Guy <laughs> from, from it. And, and I believe oh, it was... Oh, Family Guy. Hey, Peter. Hey, Peter. Family, Family Guy, Thunburn has got to be my favorite anime, but I, I think we should stay on topic That's about Caldega. And, and what? At, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that... <laughs> All right. All right. It's an animation. I mean... It's animation, but why call it an anime? Oh yeah, but we're going up to definitely on topic. So, real quick. Um, I actually began to notice where Admech is suddenly gone betrayal against the Imperium. Why is that? Their rumors say that Admech have gone treason because they want to give Chaos a fighting chance, where it can be a three-way battle. There have also been rumors where they're just they just want a good, worthy fight. While the other small tiny rumor, but heavily on their side, they want to avenge the toaster that was killed by the god emperor himself. <laughs> what do you guys think? Well, they're I, just uh, toasters that uh, they're toasters that can't really take the heat. So yeah, I mean, take that as you will. Oh, a lot of times it's uh, I don't know, I don't know the exact reasoning behind it, but I know that uh, usually doesn't end up too well for them. So you gotta. I, I, I have to imagine that they might be, be be thinking about their decision a little bit sometimes. Well, well, uh, oh, but hey, it, it, it gives us it gives us I'm 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 in full support of it. Every any time I see the, the the red cloak, it's like a a wash of endorphins and and like just pure happiness when I get to shoot a few bolt rounds. It's beautiful. it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful feeling. I think everybody should experience it. <laughs> What about you, Halo? What do you think of all this? I think, uh, on the contrary. Um, I don't think it's meant to give Chaos a, a fighting chance, more so uh, give the genre as a whole more gameplay. You know, because you have a whole faction full of individuals who, you know, uh, could very well just be fighting each other. There's two separate factions. You know, and, and they, they differ the capture points, right? So one will capture one capture point, one will capture the other in the other one's name, and you can't spawn on that. So it just makes sense for them to be fighting. Hmm, makes sense. Honestly, those days actually remind me where, well, Necrons, Eldari, Imperium of Man, and Chaos just had, a, just had an all-out battle. And this is when I was a space... This is when, when I was a space... Those battles were simply, simply horrendous. Many people dying. Game was likely, by the way. But the but the mere sheer effort that each opposing unit had tried to tried to do just to get fuel station back 
was greatly, greatly visualized in what 40k was. Especially when, especially when we all just barely had anything but, but guns that were not so easily developed, and so, and morphs that had made the game so much laggier, but either way, it was just good. It was just really good. But you know what? With, well, with that mech actually coming into the play and actually having a couple of more stuff added into their ranks, what do you, what do you guys think of the behemoth that actually out you, much less out helps you by, by plenty? The phalanx, or the thylax, or whatever you call it. For chaos, the thalax is just a small obstacle to be defeated. Ah. I got to agree. For the uh, the god emperor, he, he gives me his power. In the, he is uh, a massive, living iron target. It's just, yep. it's just like a little bit, the, the clink it makes whenever you hit him. It's like a, just a little... I, I, I imagine it's is the uh, the God Emperor's voice telling me, "Good job, keep keep it up." Mm. Every time I hear the clink of, a, of, a, of an Admex arm. So, um, Thunburn, I came a little prepared. Uh, would you mind if I fielded a few questions for you? Okay, go ahead. Is that all right? Is that all right? Yes, sir, sir, sir. Okay. Um. So this comes from higher up, up higher than me, of course. Um, here, first question here. Would you ever be interested in recording voice lines for the Imperium one day? Uh, well, ye yes. I would absolutely want to. Yes? Yes. Okay. Nice, nice. That's that's good. What, what do you think your role would be? Uh, what, what best roles fit you, Thunburn, as a voice actor? That one man who would be... Well, battle hungry or strategy of some kind. Battle I, hungry. Battle Good. hungry and strategy. Good. Good. What do you? Okay. What? Another question here. Um, what do you think about the o Ogren core as a whole? I feel like you've. You said you've been an Ogren before. I feel like you resonate a lot with that. What do you? How do you feel about the Ogrens as a whole? How do I feel on the Ogrens? Yeah, just, just about the Ogrens. Yeah. I say this in all respect. No disrespect intended. Just giving my fair share of opinion out there. I think the Ogrins do well, but not too well. Trust me, they fulfill their goals absolutely very well. And they have surely been able to turn many tides of battle so far. They're the heavy unit, and that's what they are. They're truly meant to be the front line, be the front line or the main distraction of enemies. But sometimes the people who play it, I'm not pointing fingers, I'm not pointing who, just don't intend to play them right. The Ogrens as a so whole. So you think you think you think if you were in the shoes of an Ogren, you would do it justice? No, triumphantly say, striding through battle as an Ogren. Not say do it right, and not saying it doing better. But do it just... Well, no, no, no. I'm just saying, just in, in comparison to those uh, aforementioned individuals, yes, you said yes. Right, Thunburn? Mighty Thunburn would would take control of an ogre and know what to do with it. Yes, I would absolutely know what to do with it because I was the top nog ogre. Give me, give me a better yes, ogre. I want to hear it in your soul. I was the top nog of an ogre. I had fulfilled my duty as an ogre. I shielded my allies. I protected my captains. I made sure to be the front man in the field as the enemies come and shoot down on me. And as I charge, feeling every bolt shot, every last gun, every sort of damn bullet that hit my flesh, I say, come at me and bring it on! Nice. Powerful stuff. Uh, okay, one more question, one more question, one more question, I'll be out of your hair and you can continue the Thumbcast. Um, are you a fan of the Emperor? I... Himself, like himself, the individual, the, the Emperor at the top of the, uh, this genre, the Emperor. When I did the podcast with him, it was an honor. 
to know that he was able to ask himself to be part of the podcast, much less be able to come on and give his fair share of just word itself, it was an honor. And I say that because this man had came out of his way, gone through trials and tribulations to make the group what it is. He basically gave everyone who didn't have a home in 40k, a home where they're capable of being whoever they want, fighting for whatever they believe in, and better yet, making this group, well, sorry, making this game and group the, and the community the best place to be part of. And first, when I was skeptical for when I was only here just for Builder, just so I could try to support him, I realized for what sacrifices that he had to do. How many people... How many people... How many people had to go? Those sacrifices... Probably... Tough decisions, Thunder. Tough decisions, yes. That's, that's, the word I'm, that's the word I'm looking for. But in the end, he made those sacrifices just so he, just so we can all can be happy, just so we can all thrive. And people have a bad opinion about it, and other people may not be able to have a good opinion, much less even a nice opinion to say. But I have this opinion. I'll go, and John, both of you guys are simply the best that I have ever known. And you've given me a home that I can finally come back to for losing my old one a long time ago. I thank you for that. And I honestly thank each and every one of you here for liking for what I do. Making this Thuncast actually possible. Giving me the motivation that I need to, well, go on. Because I see each and every one of you as family. And though they are, you don't see me as one... I still treat you as a fellow friend on the battlefield. Good. That was beautiful. Amazing. That's fantastic. <laughs> you're a, you're 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 a moving public speaker, something. Moving, yeah. absolutely. But wait, before before we before we end this conversation, I'm just gonna say this. I'm glad that the Ogrins have simply been brought back to their numbers. Before, it was only just a few of us, me and Mass, against the entire against the entire Necrons, Eldar, much less Chaos also in this, Chaos Space Marines. We were the only two that were active. And I'm glad to see that there are more Ogrins to simply be able to fulfill the roles, or try to fulfill the roles of what they're given. And I'm glad to see it's back alive. I just, I just miss, I just miss being an Ogre. That's, that's the whole point of it. I think you will reclaim your former glory, Thunburn. Maybe not in necessarily the same capacity, but uh, probably the same amount of honor. With, with how much I have high hopes for you, Thunburn. I, th I have me as well. With how much passion you've shown, I think it's it's certainly admirable. It's deserved. Yep. Thanks. I really love this group, you know. And honestly, yeah. even when this group would probably retire, I'll still have fun memories, like I always had before, and even before that. Hell yeah! <laughs> All right, let's continue. Let's continue on. You know what? Um, yeah. Hello, thank you for asking those questions. Honestly, that was really me just, really me just being myself and, well, just going back on some stuff that I. This is great, Thunburn. I think this, I think this is going to be one of the best Thuncasts yet. Indeed. Hundred percent. Indeed. I mean everything with a good, compassionate heart, and I mean every project that I do for the Imperium is something that I want to see everyone here thrive, have a good time, and just enjoy themselves. I'm not doing it for views, I'm not doing it for subscribers. I'm doing it so people can actually have their fair share of opinion. Like I said, you all can be able to talk about whatever you want, even these even dislikes about the Imperium. 
just not too, just not too much. <laughs> uh, yes, um, you know, with, you know, that's actually a much this, oh, and continuing upon the conversation before, before Halo had asked me, well, that is something that's coming from you, from you two, well, sorry, you three. You all had fought, you all had fought Admit for so long, and as they were puny and weak, they decided to upgrade themselves, truly be more improvable, show that they have more might by giving them high, powerful units that can much fly, that can actually do more damage, that can actually probably beat you in a 1v1 if you play your cards right. And honestly, that is something more terrifying. And I've seen those 1v1s before, and that's not, and that's not be, me being able to go over that mountain, much less be able to give you that ally support, because guess what? I'm shooting at another enemy that's coming down, or they're shooting back at me. And there are occasions that you guys would honestly lose. But, though that there are only two of them now, what would happen if there are more? What, if, what would happen if Admech decided to say they'd probably add those... I, and forgive me, as I, for, I keep forgetting those robots names among us looking figures of robots i i does any of you guys have a name for them um the sekitar no 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 like there are these robots that kind of oh, the, the among you said the among us robots yes the among us robots that have that simple and the only reason why you say that is because of the face mask that's is it because they're sus or <laughs> <laughs> well, sus, no? But for real, what's the name of those robots? They're I like... have no idea. Gun are you was talking about the, the hoplites. No, not the hoplites are one with the shields, right? Or the hoplites yeah. are like the no, no, no. I'm talking about those machines that have like the flame flowers. Oh, the Castellans. The cast. Those are what they are. The Castellans. The Castellans. They're okay. They, okay, and just to add a little bit of more context and to actually say what I'm talking about, have you guys ever watched Hammer and Bolter? Yeah, I have, have actually. Um, it's that one episode where the Skitari was with that one machine. That's that's the machine I'm talking about. Yeah, sorry, I skipped the Admech episode. Oh, you skipped the Admech episode. <laughs> but what was it called again, Halo? What was the machine called again? The Castellan, yeah. Yeah, the Castellan. Honestly, what would you think if they added suddenly added that machine? It would be cool. It would be cool? It would be fun to fight? Yeah. Yeah. And even if they don't add the Castellan, what if they just add three of, mo three of those phalanx? Or more, or probably the four phalanx. Uh, well, I mean, I think, uh, more targets, bigger fight. It's always, it's always fun. I, uh, I have no objections as long as they might be finally able to push something. Yeah, you know, maybe get them out of Nexus, Ren Nexus and Rift oh, defense. Oh. Maybe see the hills of Firebase or the the underground of Vehicle Diva. I don't know. The Crane of Secundus. Yeah. That would be interesting for three of you. Much less, much less speaking to great space marines, and you to soon be one, Halo. Actually, no, three of you soon to be, three of you soon to be, right? You guys are not full space marines. Matter of fact, you're just neophytes or aspirants. Not, not yet. We're not neophytes yet. Oh, oh, well, soon to be. Well, then, soon to be space marines. If God answers my prayers, yeah. Right. Alright. This would be good to see, especially from especially from three veterans. Nice suggestion. You can guys can learn a lot from Green. I tell you this, this Green was an absolute melee specialist. And by god and by god he was the one that actually learned how to use a blade. If you actually didn't know, Green had a Discord server. Where he would, where he would do one v ones with other people, with one v ones with other people, and I stopped coming to it for two, I stopped coming to it except for two times, not because I was mad or anything. I just not say it was boring. I just couldn't been able to have time due to life suddenly changing all of a sudden, well, more dramatically, I would say. But honestly, if Green had suddenly kept on doing it, would you guys actually be part of it, or? 
go to it just so you can have a better understanding of what melee is, truly is? Yeah, so... Training's our, not uh, never a bad idea. Yeah, in our it's like the Roblox... Right now, uh, yeah, yeah. No worries. Uh, in our aspirancy, we're doing, we're fo having a focus on melee. And Sai actually is uh, currently being mentored by Green. Yeah, uh, and, and that's it's yeah. such an honor. It's like uh, it's like being taught by the Roblox equivalent of uh, Sigismund. So, um, it's been a great honor to be uh, trained by Greedy Me. Ah, I'm glad that he's doing well. Still, I'm glad that he's doing. <laughs> you know, speaking of mentors, I probably have already done said this before, but just to say to you guys, I once had a mentor myself, and this has extended me farther, farther than I expected. Have you guys actually watched my other podcast videos where I explained the story of my mentor? Um, I have, I have skimmed through it, but I must have missed that. I don't think I've caught that one, Thumber. No, I don't think I've seen that one. Well, yeah. just a short story. Just a short story of it. I had a mentor. He was a good friend of mine, my very first friend, matter of fact. When we met on Roblox, we went on Gulliver's Crusades together. Basically, had a wonderful, basically had a wonderful time. He actually taught me a lot about 40k, and I actually really got interested. Where he wanted to train me, or no, wait, I wanted him to train me into becoming a space marine. He taught me everything about each and every chapter, and I settled with the Templars. As I settled with the Templars, gone through every sort of trial and tribulation to become a Templar, and after the last final and after the last final session of actually becoming a Templar, we both have a one v one, and I never saw him again. But before he left, he gave me the role, which to our both imagination, Space Marine, and I honored that role ever since. These are even, that's why my profile is a Space Marine Templar and the podcast logo to be a Space Marine Templar. Just not as one, just the only thing about it is, is the horns. And you want to know why I actually get the horns? Why? Many, many people would think that that is chaos, that is chaos, or why, but no. These horns actually show a story within my life that truly changed me. I finally realized something that nobody had ever been able to tell me before. And with that, I finally realized why. I finally realized... Oh. I'm not going to go too much into detail after that. After all, after me just figuring that out, I decided to wear these horns as punishment for what I did. This was way long, long time ago, and I'd rather keep that punishment to myself. Even say that the Emperor himself, not this Emperor, by the way, sort of other one that I... No. He, I gave myself as punishment. And I'm not the emperor, enemy of the emperor. I'm just a man who's trying. Well, sorry, a space marine who's trying to repent for the sins that I've committed. That's interesting. Yep. It's, it's good, Thunburn. Some good lore you got there, Thunburn. Atonement, atonement is very valued. It's interesting, interesting to hear that the mighty Dirkberg has, has had a mentor. He wasn't always this, this mighty. Yep. Honestly, he was the very man who actually analyzed my talents, saw me for who I was, and therefore wanted me to see more. And he's actually the second reason why I began to do these speeches, have this voice. He gave, basically gave me the confidence, the morale boost to keep on going. And he sent me off with a message knowing that I may be able to give inspiration to many other people, like Builder and Green and others. I basically You're a huge inspiration for all of us. Thanks. I'm incredibly inspired by, by you, Farnberg. You know... 
even if I didn't, then, even if I did then or didn't end up making it, I wouldn't been able to fully understand. Okay, no, I'm going too much, going too much, going too much. I'm sorry, I'm kind of going. Let's get back on track, Thunberg. Yes, yeah, let's go. yes, indeed. Sorry about that. Sorry, I really end up doing that too often, and that's just me. <sighs> Trying get to get all your Thunbergers back in order. Yes, get indeed. the screamy train rolling. Yes, indeed. So, without me, without me being present within the I, within the IOM, and now being open to all, and now being open to all, honestly, what would you think? What would be next? Who? Would, which faction would be introduced that would actually get more of a fighting chance? What do you think would make the community so much more better? And which faction would be able to be added? What do you think of this? God. I kind of want to see some Tau freaks, you know? Like, I just want to see some blue dudes flying some cool mech ships and stuff. And I think, uh, you know, that would add a lot of variety to the battlefield. Honestly, when you just say that, I'm going to say this out of pure confidence. Yes! Finally, one person acts. A uh, few people actually understand what the Tal Empire feels, especially the far side enclave. What about you, Halo? I think if it would be any faction, it's between two. However, the feasibility to implement probably only one. Um, it would be between the Dark Eldar, the Drakari, and the Necrons. I'd like to see. Bring him back the two. The Necrons, uh, I you did have those in the past, so feasibility for implementation probably going to be way easier to implement Necrons. I would honestly say I would honestly say the Necrons should come back, but I want to push more into Eldari. Because fun fact, the Eldari was actually supposed to be getting more powerful, and Mac himself really enjoyed making Really enjoyed making them into something very, very power. Well, sorry, I'm making a mistake in this sentence. Matt wanted to make this guitar very powerful, very powerful enough to take on Space Marines, where they introduced those soul-like. Where he actually made a soul-like mech suit. If you actually go back into the sneak peeks in the which one is it? I think it's the Dark Millennium server or the Imperium of Man server. You can actually see a very old sneak peek where he had made one of the very first Tal of oh, sorry, Eldar soul like mech suits. I forgot what you call them, but that's actually the very first model of them, and it was actually being it being made in the new mesh or blender blender style. No Union style. Is it? Are you guys actually looking? It's Blender. It's Blender. You guys are actually looking? Mm. I'm, I'm trying to find it, yeah. It's at the very, very top. Max was so... Max was actually really wanted... Really wanted the Skitar... I mean, not the Skitar. The Eldar to advance. Just to be more powerful, but... Well... It was destined to fail. I knew some of the leaders who honestly, who honestly were in Tal. I mean, sorry, not Tal. Sorry, not Tal, Eldar. But they were so impatient. They never really understood what it really meant to be a unit. They wanted more. They wanted some. They wanted more. They wanted more, and they wanted more. But they couldn't have been able to get more. Because in the end, they had to do the cycle of waiting. And they were never into that. So they just complained and complained and complained. Don't get me wrong. Their leaders know what they were doing. Especially when it came to capturing certain points on the field of battle. And not to mention those guns that actually melt, like, melt so badly. <laughs> and I just remembered something. I actually rem rem remembered cutting off uh, Eldar's head when I when I was a librarian, and I was right behind him. I forgot that video, and I think it's somewhere in general chat. But yeah, Max was Max w was obsessed with the Eldars, but when he when they suddenly just got removed, he was sad. 
I do hope that when Eldar probably gets added back, Max can finally get his redemption. And therefore, this group would actually become more better for that. Still can't find it. Nope. No, I cannot. But that's all right. Really? It should be all the way up there. Wow. There have been a lot of sneak peeks that have actually gone by. Maybe, maybe, maybe when uh, Mac sees this video, he might be able to show you guys the the sneak peek that he had made. Or if anything, if I am able to find it, I'll just send it to you guys. But this. If I can remember correctly, the soul suit or whatever you call it was basically going to was basically going to have the health of one hundred and no, one thousand and two hundred. And before there was no armor, so the space marines had at least five hundred HP, if I can remember correctly. While the out, while these walking mech suits of soul of a soul. Had health of a hundred and one thousand two hundred health, and that was even before armor was implemented. So it was just all health. Hmm. Powerful, powerful, yeah. powerful indeed. Especially, especially when they were given a powerful melee weapon and a gun. But sadly, they only had to pick towards. They had some. But sadly, they had to choose between one. Yes, Is one it? melee or one or or gun. Either way. Um. Let's see. Let's see here. So, gun, halo, and trunk. What are your plans in the future? You still have a long way to go for becoming a space marine. And with you becoming a space marine, you would probably either have new goals, or your goals would already be completed. What are you going to do when that time hits you? Well, for me at least, sorry I didn't mean to interrupt you, you know, but for me, I think, like you said, it's my goals will probably change when I get to the Astartes, if I hope. Um, but I think right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay on the on the path of uh, of tactical marine, just mm. using the bolter, having the. Oh, Trump! <laughs> so humble. For me, I have great aspirations. Past Black Legionnaire. Past Black Legionnaire, I hope to secure uh, the position of Balefire Alkali, so I can cast foul sorceries all across the battlefield. And after that, Sorcerer Lord, and probably on the way to Balefire, uh, Balefire, excuse me, Alkalite, I'll be a Rubike. You really have that destined dream. Would you be able to achieve it, Halo? Come hell or high water, yes. <laughs> a boldness. All right. Seko, what do you think? What are your intentions? Well, Thunburn, if the God Emperor permits me to be one of the Emperor's angels, me personally, in terms of goals, I just want to put my best foot forward and make sure that this community sticks together and make sure that this community is a good one for, for new players to join. And that's just my overall goal. So something in the far future, looking towards leadership of some sort. Hmm. Okay. Okay. All of you have great expectational goals. Each one of sing each and single one of them, honestly, very, very emotional and powerful for the next. And honestly, for the old or the new who would be able to listen to these videos, just to get a better understanding for what the motives are and much less goals within the group, you guys have truly made a great inspiration. Well, sorry, great inspiration for this podcast, which brings me to this one question. There are occasions where Space Marines would end up joining the Chaos ranks just to give the battle the the upper hand to others. But what if that wasn't the case? What if 
a powerful unit suddenly got spawned in the chaos. A giant warp portal suddenly opening, and out and out comes it a, ma- a giant demon-like prince with claws and all, wings that expand up to thousands of miles. The demon prince. Honestly, it was actually an idea that I pitched a long time ago. For them, at least. What do you, what do you guys think if that, if that wonk hulking wonk of a beast came into Caldega? I think fighting demons would be, be extremely fun. I uh, yeah. think demons in lore and uh, just in books and in like the, uh, like the short films, I think they're all really cool. I think, uh, I think fighting them would be a challenge, but it'd be fun. I think uh, if, we, uh, if they do come out, I think the, uh, a, certain, a certain chapter that, that deals with that would, be, would also be out. I think that'd be awesome. I think it'd be awesome. I would love to have a bloodthirster rip the Thalax's head off. <laughs> yeah, I'd pay money for that. Hey! <laughs> alright, alright! Great expectations! But, if that's going to be the case, Halo, you're chaos, you're chaos. Would you not want to become that? That hulking beast? Probably a changer of ways, then, if I were to follow my path. Smart. Smart. I do wish you the best of luck on your journey, though. Especially it being possible in the uh, in the IOM. Well, my fellow friends, we have came this far. So far, we have been recording for 50 minutes. Long, but not too long, because I think I've recorded much more longer than this. So... We're, coming, we're going to bring this podcast to an end. Thank you for being part of this part, Duncast, and truly giving your fair share of opinion, your goals, your expectations, and your opinions. They're all... Can I wrap us up here, Thunburn? You may. With a... oh. I just want to say, say out the Thuncast. Uh, just want everybody to know that uh, the Emperor is watching including you, Thunburn. So you better behave. I'm aware. I am aware. If I will, can I do some shout-outs there, Thunburn? What, wait, what was that? Can I do some shout-outs? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'd like to shout-out um, Brother Crispo, wonderful guy. Uh, Chaplain's Fee, thank, thank you. Uh, and Lord Blastoise. 100% real. Mm. Trunk, would you like to say something for the end of the podcast? I, uh, everyone else that's been shouted out, it's fantastic. I'd, uh, I'd also like to shout out maybe Kevin, the king of, king of the middle school playground. The gut dude. Um, oh, yeah. As well as, I think, someone that comes to mind is Soldier of Allah 73, man. That Admech soldier, keep it going, man. I love, I love seeing your name, dude. Yeah. I'd, like to, I'd like to shout out Comrade Payne. Need to work on your aim a little bit. <laughs> uh, Alright, alright. Everyone, and fellow guests, thank you for attending the Thundercast. It's good to be back. And remember, we know what you said, Thunder. Oh, God! We know what um, you said, Thunder. Ah! Uh, we know. <laughs> Eyes everywhere. I know. I'll never forget, man. I know. I'll never forget Lundberg. I know. <sighs> Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. See everyone later. Thank you, Thumburn. It was an honor. Thank you for having us, Thumburn. You're welcome. You're Thanks welcome. Lundberg. You're welcome. You all have a wonderful day, everyone. And thank you for attending the podcast. Long. Absolutely. Actually, not log in. You know what? Have a wonderful day, everyone.